Hey guys, we are in our free online coaching classes for the NET examination and this video will be the lecture 9 on this series. And the topic is the cloud formation and the precipitation process and the book which I referred for the topic is the Atmosphere, Ocean and Climate Dynamics by John Marshall, Climatology by John E. Oliver, Atmospheric Thermodynamics by John M. Wallace. And this topic is in the fourth heading that is the Ocean and Atmosphere. Welcome to my channel Success Guru and myself Panchanadam and let's get into the heading. The Cloud Formation and Precipitation The condensation of water above the earth's surface that creates the cloud. And in general, the cloud develops in any air mass that becomes saturated. That is the relative humidity of that air mass should reach 100%. The saturation can occur by way of atmospheric mechanism that causes the temperature of an air to be cooled to its dew point. So the dew point is the temperature to which the air must be cooled to become saturated with the water vapor. But when cooled further what happens the airborne water vapor will condense to form the liquid water and that is called the dew. And this can be uh, done by many process and the following are some of them. The first one is the orographic uplift. The second one is the convectional lifting. The third one is the convergence or frontal lifting. The fourth one is the radiative cooling. So these are the four main processes that are responsible for the formation of clouds as well as the precipitation. So let us see one after the other. The first one is the orographic uplift. That is when the air is forced to rise because of the physical presence of an elevated land. And that is if there is a hill or a mountain is present and if the air mass has to cross that region, what happens? The air mass has to rise and that leads to the uh, cool of that air mass due to the adiabatic expansion. And the rate of adiabatic expansion is like 10 degrees Celsius per kilometer. For example, the development of clouds and resulting heavy quantity of precipitation along the southwest coast of India during the northeast monsoon is due to this process. And as you know, when the air mass crosses the orography, that is the hill or mountain, there will be a region that is called the rain shadow region because whatever the water that the wind or uh, that brings that has been uh, dropped in one side of the hill and in the other side what happens there will be dry and that is called the rain shadow region that is there will be no rain that is it means the rain shadow is a patch of land that has been forced to become desert because of the mountain range that blocks all plant growing rainy weather in one side of the mountain what happens you can see wet weather system that drops rain and snow on the other side of the mountain you can you cannot expect any of the such a thing only the rain shadow is there that is there will be no much vegetation and water supply so this is the orographic uplift that leads to the formation of clouds as the air masses rises up due to the presence of a physical landform so the next one is the conven convectional lifting it is associated with the surface heating of the air at the ground surface if enough heating occurs, the mass of air becomes warmer and lighter than the air in the surrounding and it rises like a hot air balloon. When sufficient cooling takes place, saturation occurs forming the, forms the cloud. So when the surface is heated up higher, what happens? The air mass that lies near the surface will also warm and the warmer air will always moves up like a hot air balloon and such a moving the moving air mass will expand that, that forms the clouds and this process is called the convectional lifting. This process is active in the interior of the continent that is near the equator that forms the cumulus and cumulonimbus clouds. The rain that is associated with, this with the development of thunderstorm cloud is delivered in large amount over a short period of time in extremely localized area. So this is what the convectional lifting leads to that is a large amount of rain in a shorter period of time and only in a localized area. If you want to know much about this thing we had already discussed about the convectional lifting in our previous class that you can check. And the next one is the convergence or frontal lifting. So this happens when two air masses of different temperature and moisture for, for example cold and dry 
warm and moist comes together the leading edge of the cold and dry air mass act as a inclined wall and let the warm and moist air moves up as you know the colder wind will be denser when compared to the hotter or warmer wind so the warmer will, will, wind will rise up and the colder wind will stay in the bottom the lifting moist warm air cools due to the expansion and that leads to the formation of clouds and this cloud formation mechanism is common at mid latitude where the polar as well as the equatorial wind meets where you know the polar wind will be cold and dry and the equatorial wind will be warm and moist so these two meets at the mid latitude and that leads to the formation of cyclones and as you know the tropical cyclone is a rapidly rotating storm system that is characterized by a low pressure center and a close lower level atmosphere circulation and a strong wind so this is the reason for the formation of cyclone when two different air mass meet one another and the next one is the radiative cooling that is when the sunlight does not reach the surface like in night what happens the surface of the earth begins to lose energy in the form of radiation and which causes the ground and air above the ground to cool and the cloud that results from this type of cooling takes the form of surface fog so this is what happening in radiative cooling that is when the sunlight is not reaching the surface the energy that is the heat energy that is uh, stored in the earth surface will be released in the form of radiation and that causes the cooling of the surface as well as the nearby wind and that leads to the formation of cloud and that is uh, felt as fog during the winter climate the fog is a visible aerosol consisting of tiny water droplets or ice crystals suspended in the air at or near the earth surface fog can be considered a type of low lying cloud so the let us see about the precipitation that is the word precipita precipitation is derived from the latin word precipitatio that means headlong falling down and the precipitation that includes rain snow hail sleet and fog the the form depend upon the following conditions whether we will be getting rainfall or whatever it is that is dependent on the following condition that is the temperature at which the condensation takes place the condition encountered as the parcel passes through the air the type of cloud and the height from the ground and the process generating this phenomena so these are the four main controlling criteria which decides whether your location will be getting rain or snow or hail or sleet or fog whatever it is so this will be controlled mainly by this four characters the forms of precipitation let us see one after other the precipitation results from the continuous condensation and growth of the moisture parcel until they become too large to remain suspended in the air so that case the precipitation will take place and if the condensation occurs just above the 0 degree celsius what happens the resulting precipitation will be in the form of rain so when the condensation is happening above 0 degree celsius whatever it at any temperature the resultant will be the rain that is the water will fall and if the rain passes through a layer of cold air on the way down what happens it may freeze and fall as sleet and in strong turbulent current of thunderstorm what happens the water droplet may carried upward into freezing temperature and that will eventually fall as hail and snow is not actually the frozen rain but forms when moisture crystal directly from vapors at a temperature below the freezing the ice storm results when the rain already near the freezing point falls on the colder ground and the vegetation and freezes up on contact so these are the different uh, forms of precipitation and the controlling factor for the type of precipitation i hope this will be uh, sufficient for this heading and if you still have any doubt you can just ask me in the comment section and i will try to clear it i group my videos according to the category that you can check in my playlist you can connect with us by mail facebook and instagram and these are the links you can support us by like share and subscribe thanks for watching have a great day